Coming up on show 496, it's a fully charged live interview show special. Well, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you're listening around the world. Welcome to EV News Daily. It's a bonus show for Tuesday the 11th of June 2019. My name is Martin Lee and last week I featured a first few interviews from people that I bumped into at Fully Charged Live at Silverstone. Three days of EV talk and sustainable energy chat as well. And I had so much really good feedback actually over the weekend and it, it by the look of it you really enjoyed. Lots of people enjoyed listening to interviews, not only with those people inside the EV industry and the low carbon sustainability in industry, but also members of the public who were going along just to have a look around, have a nosy from all different backgrounds, EV drivers, non-EV drivers, those who are EV curious. And so I thought, let's make a bonus show for you today where you can just hear those people. And it was all about the really the interviews that I was doing in the car. Let me explain. The main car park was fully charged live a couple of miles away from where the main exhibition... It's The main exhibition hall was in the middle of a racetrack. So there's not you know there's not room for 10,000 people turning up in cars on the inside of a racetrack so you have to park on the outside and then yes yeah, there were buses electric buses but also the Renault Zoe owners club here in the UK and also the Tesla owners club as well who are raising a lot of money as well for charity Fa- fantastic volunteered their time and their cars to transport people from the main car park to the the conference center where it was being held and I was one of those I love volunteering I love giving my time and I was looking forward to meeting people and having random serendipitous conversations, hopefully. And the first one, actually the first two, the chap you'll hear after this, Hull Leaf guy, someone I I know supports the podcast, (laughs) talk to him online, only know him virtually, so it's nice to to, uh, to meet Darren Sand. Uh, First of all, though, Andy Eastlake is the MD of the Low Carbon Vehicle Partnership. And again, someone who I've followed for a long time. He's been there many years now. i followed him for a long time. He deals with all sorts in the EV industry. And again, I just, you know, I could have queued up all day long and and just spoken to people. I really, really enjoyed it. Of, all the, of the 10,000 people that turned up, I'm, I'm really pleased that I was in the queue of electric shuttle cars and Andy was the first person to get in because I've, I've wanted to talk to him for ages and this was a perfect excuse. And I kicked off the interview by talking about how really he is and has for a long time been at the very centre of this whole industry here in the UK. Absolutely, yeah. I do do a lot of work with the government in terms of the policy and uh, trying to sort of shape the activity for low carbon, zero emission vehicles such as we see today. Now, I I follow you on Twitter as many people do, but if people want to find out more, where where can they find you? Uh, It's at A Eastlake. It's pretty straightforward. (laughs) Were you fully charged last year? I imagine you were. I was indeed, yeah. We've got a stand here for the Low Carbon Vehicle Partnership. So, uh, yeah, we we, uh, we cover a lot of this space. Uh, It's great to be back here and see it expanding so so rapidly in terms of the whole market and the show itself. Now the low carbon vehicle partnership pretty much does what it you know it says on the tin you can imagine if you don't know uh, what you do from from the name but what are your challenges this year do you think in a 2019 world? Uh, well I think um, we're seeing and, and the show here today is a great example of, of there's a real appetite for these vehicles for the sort of low carbon uh, there's a problem with uh, uh, availability so there's a challenge in terms of getting them I know delivery times are quite long uh, we're still working we're doing a lot of work on the infrastructure because that's always raised as one of the issues and I think actually um, actually the infrastructure is a lot better a lot, a lot more usable than people realise um, but some of the opportunities of connecting your car to the grid using the cars uh, in conjunction with the grid to make the make the grid and the renewable en- en- electricity work better uh, thinking about how you smart charge vehicles uh, there's some really good opportunities around uh, sort of connecting up the cars and uh, and your apps and uh, and that sort of thing so there's a lot going on in this space uh, and behind all of that of course uh, the policy to encourage encourage more people to take these vehicles um, is still you know we still need to support things like the grants yeah. the incentives a lot going on before I got uh, an EV, long before I started the EV News Daily podcast, I didn't really care what a kilowatt hour was. But it's funny when you start thinking about electric cars. Uh, you know, since then, you know, my dad's bought one. Family members have got them, and you actually start. It's really interesting. You take a much more of an interest in well, how much does my 
washing machine cost? I mean, little things like that. But but when you do that, millions of people at scale across a country, it's interesting what that's going to do over on a you know a five to ten year long term. One of the challenges is how we communicate the benefits. And uh, in America, you're probably aware that they they tend to talk about uh, miles per gallon equivalent, which gets really really complex. And uh, <laughs> I, I have a lot of debates with them. But yes, a kilowatt hour and you know kilowatt hours per mile or, or miles per kilowatt hour. Um, actually starts you thinking about energy uh, it's a bit like smart meters yeah. when you see how valuable energy is when particularly when it's in terms of range and being able to get home or not uh, actually you tend to firstly you drive differently you drive more economically very often and we see that with ev drivers a lot and you also think about your energy prices uh, if you think electricity can vary from anything from about two or three pence per kilowatt hour worst case on rapid charging we've seen 30 40 50 pence even per kilowatt hour so that range of price for energy is way way different than you see with gasoline and diesel uh, and actually that's where you know there's a real there's some really big opportunities if we do this right yeah. uh, to actually make people connect with the energy system and, help, and make the whole system of transport and energy work really really well together if you want to follow Andy as I do online you can do that and low uh, carbon vehicle partnership as well right let's go to the back of the Zoe taxi right now hello guys just introduce yourself I'm Lorna and I'm Dean first time coming this year we're just coming out to get some more info on new cars eco homes and stuff like that we've both got electric cars so we're just coming to find out more about them um, I work in a school and I'm always trying to give more information to my primary school children about the future for them of yeah. cars yeah so encouraging them and their parents interesting that the people the young people that you are in contact with will never learn to drive a fossil car it's nice for them to have first-hand information from like somebody that I can give I can give them information to help them to make the choices sort of later on in the future about the electric cars absolutely so you guys both drive EVs what do you drive I drive a Nissan Leaf which is his old car <laughs> Yeah, Lorna's got my old 24 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf and I've got a 40. Oh, very nice. What a lovely car, a lovely car. Well, you're slumming it in a Zoe today, but I appreciate you coming on the podcast today. You're more than welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Here with Craig from the Renault Zoe Owners Club. I unfortunately had to share a drive all the way here with him for the last 25 minutes, but <laughs> let's focus on the good news. Two boys in the back, what are your names then? It's Darren Sant, Hull Leaf Guy. And uh, I'm John Gibbons, we've both uh, come down from Hull. Amazing, all right Darren, so you've been a part of the EV community here in the UK for a long time, making content. Once again, back at Fully Charged Live this year. Welcome to your uh, your podcast debut, by the way. Good to have you. <laughs> Thank you, good good to see you, mate. Nice to meet you. So uh, this year, you came last year, this year's so much bigger. Is this, were you here yesterday? No, 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 we just came down last night, stopped in a hotel and just come down for, the, for today. The last year has been amazing for EVs, really. Like, more and more people just wanting to... Uh, have you noticed a, a change in attitudes? Yeah, a lot of people seem to be getting a lot better educated. You don't get as many daft questions as you used to. Like, you know, can you drive it in the rain? Because <laughs> <laughs> it is raining at the moment, and we none of us are getting uh, electrocuted. Uh, so, you guys, uh, how long was your journey down today in the EV? Oof, we, about... we came down last night, but uh, we made it longer than it had to be, about three and a half hours. Yeah simply because I wanted to get here with a full charge so I could get a good radius away on the way home tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We spotted, uh, we were coming in today and we spotted a charger that no one was using and that's like uh, like hen's teeth. Yeah. 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 Well, we, did, we did okay, didn't we, last night? Yeah. They were pretty if, empty. If, yeah. Every charger we got to was empty, so we were quite lucky. Yeah. Right, okay. What are you looking forward to seeing at the show? Everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the new Peugeot. I'm c curious about the new Peugeot. Uh, any Mod Lessies I can, I can, uh, I can drool over. Oh, very nice. Uh, sorry, Model 3s. Yeah. I'm about saying, to be honest, yeah, I've got a soft, spot, a soft spot for Peugeots anyway, and the fact that they're all of a sudden just started bringing cars out, yeah, I, I'd like to see one of those, really, because I'm, I'm looking at trying to buy one myself at some point, so good one to look at. As we, as we watch a helicopter land over Silverstone, that's... Uh, that's that's a different kind of transfer, right? Sorry, I, I'm letting off of you a Zoe today. <laughs> I'm quite happy. happy uh, for the love, the, love the Zoe. <laughs> back in the Zoe taxi right now. Just one on board, but that's okay. Hello, Tom. Uh, is this your first time at Fully Charged? It is, yeah, certainly. Just here you know, to see what's going about and, yeah. uh, you know, talk about it in my job. Oh, okay, so, right. I don't, know if, I don't know if I should ask about your job because somebody's like, oh, I can't talk about it. But, um, like, are you an EV driver or a future EV driver? 
Well, at work, we've got a small fleet of EVs. We've got um, two Nissan ENV 200 vans, yeah. um, a couple of Leafs, a BMW i3, um, and a Passat GT, which I don't know if that really counts, but it's yeah. some form of electric. <laughs> it's, got a, it's got a plug on it. Yeah. Um, so what are you hoping to get from coming to Fully Charged? Well, where I work at um, Specific, we do the whole buildings as power stations envelope. Um, so just you know, to scout about what's, what's actually happening rather than Googling stuff and seeing it on the screen to uh, you know, have a play and you know, touch things, if you like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, uh, there's a, a ton of stuff here. There's home storage, obviously there's EVs, and there's so much stuff around EVs as well. Like you were saying, what, what you do, it's not just like the car, but it's the ecosystem as well. Yeah. We're um, looking at um, you know, smart sort of micro grid, grid control. Um, so charging up the batteries from the PV or straight into the cars attached to our smart buildings. Um, so yeah, just try not to uh, stress the grid too much if you like. Uh, <laughs> do you think do you think we'll or, so will we all have PV in the future or like how's that going to work? What's the prediction? Well, I think the cost of it's coming down and people's sort of ingrained perceptions seem to be changing with solar panels because years ago they were obviously very expensive and I think people still got that mindset you know oh it's really expensive but you know if your neighbours have got PV and you start chatting to them you might get a bit surprised at the, the cost like you know yeah. the, the, the cost coming down all the time as manufacture yeah. goes through the roof so yeah. um, I, I think so I, I'm certainly interested in getting PV on my house certainly because I'm a tinkerer like that. Uh, <laughs> electrical stuff is my my bread and butter and my job. But um, what, what's kind of interesting is here in Northern Europe, we are, I mean, the UK is the windiest country in Europe. And today, typical summer day, tipping down with rain, cloudy. But solar can still work in this country. And if it work here, it'll work in California, Vegas and Australia, right? So we should all have renewables. The more PV you have on roofs, the more moderate amount of generation you're gonna get so yeah. it, it, it all adds up you know marginal gains and all that yeah so. it's it, it there is an interesting you know kind of EVs have gone through a like any two new technology new adoption you say you're a tinkerer like you yeah. you get enjoyment out of of that there are some people though um, you know my wife included with an EV she doesn't want to know how it works. Just does it does it get me where I'm going to go? And so EVs are kind of getting to an interesting point now, where as we cross over Silverstone, there's a bunch of racing cars making lots of noise, which is kind of weird at an EV event anyway. Uh, there's two events going on at once, so it's interesting. Like different groups of people coming together, like people who are sort of techs and geeky, like I am, but also it's going to go to the mainstream where people are just like, I don't want to think about this. Yeah, well, if you think of an EV from a daily driver sort of perspective they're so simple and the you know the servicing intervals are so large compared to a internal combustion engine i, th yeah. I think it's a no-brainer really uh there's much less much fewer things to blow up like fewer moving parts <laughs> um, <laughs> and you plug them in when you get home and it charges at i don't know 2 a.m 3 a.m whenever it wants yeah. to yeah um awesome. so you never have to visit a petrol station Again, that, in that, that is the best thing about an EV. Yeah, because <laughs> you know most journeys are just to and from work, to and from a supermarket. Well, I think when people see these electric car reviews, people go on a road trip from Scotland to Cornwall, and then are frustrated when you have to wait for them to charge. And I, I don't think that represents a daily usage sort of profile for any car. You know, you, you don't drive up and down the country every single day not everybody does it no, no not at all not at all hey have a great day today yeah thank you very much i've bumped into richard at fully charged hey how are you doing i'm doing very well thanks good. martin how are you good who are you here with uh, i'm here with my other half uh, we, we came last year actually yeah um this year's bigger right this yeah, year's much bigger and it was it was really really busy last year actually like really quite cramped it definitely felt like the venue was yeah. not big enough but this year it's seems a lot more relaxed actually so, are you EV drivers? Are you EV curious? Yeah, I've got a Leaf 30 kilowatt that we came up, still stood up from sort of Brighton area. Um, we've had that for about 18 months now. 
Oh yeah, I came up from Bournemouth. You know Bournemouth's better than Brighton, right? Is That's, it? Yeah, apparently so, yeah. We're going to have to concede the point, am I? You know, the, the beach is sandy in Bournemouth, you know? I do know that, yeah. <laughs> It gets Be- everywhere though that sand. I just prefer the pebbles. Yeah, you, do, you can't get pebbles up your bum. No, I, you, I hope not. Well, anyway. no, um, I'm sure it's possible. But. People, people around the world listening, I go, Bournemouth, Brighton, what are they talking about? Um, when did you get your EV? Um, in sort of September 2017, yeah. Um, we, had, we had solar installed probably about a few months prior to that, I think. Um, and I kind of got a, a Rolex charger, which was which was all right at the time. And then the Zappy came out, and I was like, oh. I've got to have the Zappy. Yeah, so um, I got that about a year later. So I've had that since sort of September. Uh, I've got all the sort of my energy stuff now. And been sort of charging the car on solar since like middle of March, which is uh, yeah, pretty amazing, really. I'm lucky enough that I can leave it there during the day because it's only 10 minutes from work. But um, Yeah. I had this conversation with someone earlier who was super into PV, and I was saying... In the UK, where it's always cloudy, welcome to a summer's day in in Great Britain, where it was tipping down with rain this morning. Even then, PV still works. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, even on a poor day, we still maybe get sort of five or six kilowatts or something. And you know, if you're leaving at home a few day, you know, a few days a week, like it's it's enough really. Yeah. It's enough for local mileage. I mean, probably don't do more than sort of 8,000 miles a year or something but yeah, yeah. but you know solar for that is it's just fine I hardly ever use rapid chargers really unless it's a long journey yeah. but uh, you're, you're the half to know I'm not going on the podcast so I'll come and talk to you right now what, um, <laughs> I'll, ch- I'll chase you around the car park uh, wh- what's your perspective on all this you you fully on, on board and signed up well which is the uh, brains behind the idea I don't so. believe that I don't believe that <laughs> that's what I said to people like my wife and it's not true he, he's the one who designs it. oh I just benefit from it yeah yeah. But it's not, it's just that the, the house is the house and there's panels on and you just put the washing on when you want? Or do you think, oh, I'll do it in the day because the sun's shining? Yeah, yeah, I definitely am more conscious of delaying the dishwasher, delaying the washing machine and things like that. Now, what about storage? Um, I've got a sun amp heat battery, actually. Because um, I, I, I did, I looked at a power wall, but it was pretty expensive. And when I kind of looked at the bills, like obviously the solar was making a bit of a dent in the electricity anyway, but um, just, you know, we're still using quite a lot of gas to heat hot water. So I looked at the sun amp and I thought, well, you know, you can, you can charge it 50,000 times as they've tested it apparently. And it was a lot cheaper than the power wall. And it just seemed like it'd be a bit more guaranteed. It would last longer. Um, and the sort of return on investment was much shorter than the power wall. So, yeah, I, I still like some battery storage, but there's only sort of probably about three or four kilowatts a day that there is to sort of mop up. And it's, it's still quite a lot of money. You know, when the electric bill's only sort of 220 quid a year, it's like, it doesn't really seem worth it. So we kind of just opted for the self-consumption route, really. Oh, bought, yeah. bought the uh, sort of my energy products. So I've got an eddy, which is, you know, diverts the energy to the sun amp. Um, we've got the Zappy charger, which we used to charge the car off solar. Uh, you know, we put stuff on during the day, as Nikki said, sort of washing machine, that kind of thing. So, um, and, and it's pretty much we're getting sort of 75% self consumption on the solar. Um, so, there's not much going back to the grid. And so, yeah, I've just been trying to do that really rather than rather than store it yeah. and then use it when it's you think, okay, we'll just change our habits yeah. a little bit. It's not as cool as the. As the battery storage, like you know, don't get me wrong, I'd, I'd love a, a power wall glowing on the wall in the garage or something. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, probably uh, it's a bit spicy at the moment. Busy uh, converting friends and family to um, to an EV, or are they uh, not interested, or what? Um, I try, yeah. I mean, it's, people are interested, but I think I would probably bore my family. <laughs> I try to get on Twitter and just engage with people on there because they're they're just laughing it up and they all they're all happy to talk about that all day long. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Thanks very much. Cheers. A couple of podcast listeners here. Hello, what's your name? The Jolly EV fan, Pete Roberts. Jolly EV fan and... Maple Leaf Driver, D Roberts. Lovely. So there, if you're following people on socials, that's two new followers that you should be looking at. How's fully charged for you? Uh, wonderful. A lot more year than there was last year. We came to the first one last year, obviously, and it was they were just sort of putting it together and that, but this year's brilliant. A lot of people I'm seeing around here that I know from Twitter and YouTube and that. Yeah. Very friendly community. The Jolly EV fan online. What do you like to talk about when you're on your, your social media? 
well, basically about cars for the last uh, for the last two years. I've been looking to get myself my own electric vehicle. My wife picked one up uh, last year. I've been coming to this show. Uh, yeah. month or so after. Yeah. And it was being on this show, uh, come to this show, that made me think. I need a new car. Let's go electric. Yeah. So. I've had mine for a, my leaf for a year, and I I would never go back to a nice vehicle. What you got then? Thirty Techna. Oh, very nice. And you'd never. Everyone says that, so you would think that ice drivers at some point would tweak because every EV driver says, "I'm just not going back." Like yeah. I might change models, but I'm never I, going back. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And and they just need to have that faith of jumping in the car, have no range anxiety. Plan. It's just all planning. Mm. That's all it is. We got we got married in February and we drove all the way up to Gretna in it and then all the way up to Dundee. First air honeymoon, we're looking at the Dundee charging hub. <laughs> <laughs> oh, romantic. what a catch. I <laughs> know, he's a keeper. <laughs> what was it about the change of mindset that, that made sense to you in terms of range angst? I hate, I'm not even going to use that phrase. I know people, it, maybe it is a thing, but... They won't get petrol anxiety, but you can still run out of petrol. Yes, I used to have range range anxiety, um, but then now we go, we push it a bit more. We we're braver. We know how it all works. If there's um, charging stations, and you just zap map it, and it's good. I think coming I mean, from Stockton last time, you got down to six percent, didn't you? Yeah, and that was nerve wracking. <laughs> <laughs> Ninety eight miles. Great turtle mode engaged. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. Uh, and see you. you. See you. Thank you. Well, thank you for listening today. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it because it's better than me bleating on. It's actually re- it's far more interesting to hear the opinion of people who are living this and working in the industry, and also people of the you know general public who are maybe drivers, maybe curious people who uh, maybe didn't think they were going to be interviewed when they turned up to a to a show and got in a car. But everyone who was a really good sport and just fantastic. So I've got a load more of those that are hopefully. Over the next few days and weeks, I'll be able to get those out for you as well. A bunch of Saturday specials coming up, including interviews with people that we've talked about on the podcast before. We've got a Saturday special interview coming soon with how to start your own EV club, how to convert a classic car to an electric car. And also, if you have kids, when they grow up, they're never going to they're never going to learn to drive in a fossil car. Fossil cars are dead. So they're going to be learning to drive in an EV. We actually talked to someone who is a driving instructor, teaches people to drive now in EVs and is very involved as well in setting that future legislation, has a certain many opinions on that at least. So all of those Saturday specials and many more as well coming up in future weeks on the podcast make sure you listen to the other show that we're doing i'm doing today which is the irregular news show which does include our question of the week two days later than normal because i had last weekend off after a crazy fully charged live so you can get all the previous shows online if you want to for free the new ones that go up every single day mostly first and free and automatically if you hit that subscribe button in your podcast app and on youtube as well thank you so much for your support on patreon got some very special names to say thank you to over the next couple of days on our regular news shows if you want to catch up on the socials please search ev news daily in the meantime have a wonderful day i'll catch you soon and remember there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid <laughs>